Hey, good morning, world. It's Patrick Lowell coming at you on January 8th, 2023 at uh, 8 a.m. my time. And um, yeah, I've been chiming off on on uh, Twitter this morning. And I think anybody paying attention to me is like, dude, that guy's playing with fire. I'm in this situation where I'm just dumbstruck by the Bernie Madoff series that uh, is on Netflix called The Monster of Wall Street. And uh, it's one hell of a production. It's it's amazing. Um, and I'm the guy who produced the con. I'm the protagonist of the con. I'm the creator of the con. I'm the guy that went to the ends of the world and back to put together a story that's on display at www.thecon.tv. That's not on Netflix. That's not on Amazon. That's Well, it is on Amazon. It's on Amazon Prime, but it's not one of the main features on the main platforms. You have to go find it yourself. And it's for rent and downloadable on Apple TV, but um, those are great platforms. But that's not being on HBO. That's not being on uh, Netflix. That's not being on one of the premier servicers. And, uh, you know, I, I have nothing but great admiration and appreciation for the filmmakers of the Bernie Madoff story. Um, I think it was tremendous. I would think that considering it follows the exact same trajectory as the con. And, you know, they say that, um, theft is the greatest, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, appreciation. I can't, I'm, I'm fucking up the, the, uh, the, uh, statement. I'm sure many of you watching this, are like, dude, it's, it's right on the tip of your tongue, but it'll probably come to me by the end of this truth bomb. But, um, uh, flattery <laughs> theft is the, is the greatest, is the greatest execution of flattery, something to that effect. And, uh, I, you know, I assume, honestly, that the filmmakers, the researchers, whomever affiliated with that program, maybe even Netflix itself, maybe even, quite frankly, somebody like uh, the guy who is my nemesis, who I can't stand, who I hate, who I think is the biggest freaking worm in the world. And no, I'm not talking about David Sirota, even though he's up there, but none other than, um, than uh, you know, uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin from The New York Times. That son of a bitch that guy is a weasel of, of infinite magnitude because he sits there with a swarmy, like, you know, uh, safe, like I'm an expert. I've got access yet. I'm going to kind of tell you the truth and we're going to be, you know, somewhat relatable. And you're some, uh, he's somebody you can trust because he's on all the big platforms and he kind of tells it straight. No, you don't tell it straight. You motherfucker. He's been hiding what it is that I've been revealing for 13 years. Andrew Ross Sorkin was involved with uh, too big to fail which came out on HBO right after the great financial crisis where it basically portrayed, you know, uh, Hank Paulson and uh, Timothy Geithner and Ben Bernanke as the heroes of the world. They were the heroes and the saviors of the rich, okay? And Bernie Madoff's Monster of Wall Street documentary, what they do, like everybody else in my field, is they do this little dance where they basically like a surgeon – carve up a perspective where it's like, I'm going to give you some background. I'm going to kind of give you this context. I'm going to set the table with the 2008 great financial crisis. And I'm going to make it out like, you know what, I'm going to tell you the truth of what it is. And in fact, it's in the Bernie Madoff story, it was the first place outside of us where we called it liar's loans in the public space. Look it up. You can look up in the big short. You can look up in every freaking uh, 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 aspect of a front line um, on PBS, which does great work, but they never called them liar's loans, okay? I did on Crystal Ball and uh, Kyle Kalinske in a big way, but nobody else has even come close to calling them liar's loans, let alone actually explaining to you with detail what exactly that means. What they do is they kind of step on it, they give you a touchstone, and then boom, we're going to tell you a story that we want to tell you that's faith for con that's safe, safe for consumption because we're going to keep it focused on one guy. Now, interestingly enough, there's kind of a new version of that again with, with Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX and all that constitutes. And the biggest question I have in my mind at the moment is who the fuck is Sullivan and Cromwell on this connection? Why is Sullivan and Cromwell the legal, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, relationship with FTX in Alameda. What, what, do you have any idea who Sullivan and Cromwell is and where they came from? And what did I explain and express and reveal and, 
and just go ape shit about for how long now with regards to Aunt Roger Cohen, the senior partner of Sullivan and Cromwell? Do you, do you know that answer? Well, if you don't know the answer, you might want to go look it up on YouTube. You can check out Patrick Lovell Truth Bombs the Con and go to videos and scroll down and look for live and you'll see what we call 11.1.22, which is deception on you, owns you. And the answer is in about three quarters of the way through it. And it's 11 hours. You'd have to get through 11 hours to get there. And maybe I should you know, tell you exactly what it is, but I don't really want to. Because I want people to start doing the fucking work. Because the bottom line is this. I've spent 13 years crisscrossing this country, getting all of the answers from all of the main people in the fucking pipeline that reveal the largest criminal conspiracy and cover-up in history that never ended. And to put it into context is brilliant and huge and horrible and vexing and sad and all of those things that you know, uh, emanate from this Bernie Madoff, the monster of Wall Street story on Netflix, particularly the end and what happened to his family and to the investors. I mean, it's horrific. But at the same time, it's a drop in the fucking bucket compared to what I'm telling you. Now, I woke up this morning and I started, you know, chiming off on Twitter and I was just like, you know, where's my head this morning? What am I trying to convey? What am I doing and why am I doing it? And why am I trying to work through all the space? And I, and I put on Twitter yesterday, a, uh, and the reason I, I focus on Twitter is Twitter is the only place that people can actually engage in politics and corruption and other things in a way where it's like, you don't have to battle with, you know, people's pictures of their family or their dogs or people trying to live the perfect life on Facebook, which I dropped a while ago. Cause it's just fucking stupid at the moment. And I'm not in the right headspace to do that. You know, I've been doing it for like, I don't know, 13 years, but it just doesn't feel right anymore. Instagram, beautiful people, all the social media has really been tweaked and tweaked and tweaked to where the only place that you can talk about, um, you know, and make a point on, 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 on politics or corruption is it's quite frankly, Twitter and 183 characters or less, which is fucking insane. But ultimately, you know, this new consternation, particularly from the right, as it relates to the Twitter files and the revelations that are actually very intriguing. I, w- I watched an interview with Matt Taibbi yesterday we laid out some very, very compelling things, and I'm absolutely convinced, given what Taibbi has revealed, that I'm the one who's been fucking canceled and shadow banned because of the situation that I know. And I'm, I, I'm pretty goddamn sure BlackRock has put a goddamn pillow over every or uh, you know uh, aspect of communication that I've been laying out there and basically smothering it in algorithms and shadow banning and every other technical fucking juggernaut that these guys have access to where they can fucking own anybody. And I think back in, in, in the Wayback Machine, we've had a lot of this technology going back to the 2000s, man. We could have thwarted 9-11 in a nanosecond, and we didn't. And by 9-11, it was revealed in, in, the, in the Madoff story and everything else that 9-11 did exactly what I thought it did. And, and that's, a, that's another standalone, because fucking Saudi Arabia was absolutely involved with, with, with 9-11. Were they the masterminds? No. Were, were they playing a huge role as conduits? Oh, yeah. For a purpose that actually facilitates the military, industrial, financial, fuel, financial juggernaut of our country that rules the world? Oh, yeah. And so I think it's always been some sort of correlation where, you know, maybe bin Laden was planning on doing whatever he ended up doing. And we knew it and we let it happen because we wanted perpetual war to maintain the final, the financial fuel juggernaut that owns the fucking world. I think that's the, the simplest way to think of it. But the bottom line is that by doing it, we had to take resources out of the FBI and white collar fraud and the DOJ and the SEC, well, not the SEC because that's their sole fucking purpose. But then, you know, we had to, well, actually the SEC too is, is revealed in the, uh, in the um, Madoff story because they had to go after the financiers of terrorism. Meanwhile, what we ushered in was literally 20 years of financial terrorism. Wall Street is a fucking theft, deception, betrayal, back bankrupt fucking backstabbing motherfucking entity right now because a greedy son of a bitches can fucking three you know think in three-dimensional 12-dimensional chest i.e black rock and they own the fucking world as a result of what i've revealed to you go back and watch my shit check out the con check it all out why am i acting like i'm you know is this any way to sell to people well yeah because the bottom line is i looked on uh you know i posted this on twitter yesterday I mean, one of my favorite episodes of Game of Thrones, and maybe probably my favorite moment in television history, was Battle of the Bastards, where Jon Snow had to freaking survive being like in that that mud bog and just squeeze, and he rises above, and ultimately he ends up winning, right? You remember that? Ramsey got his face chewed off by when Sansa 
uh, you know, st stuck her, uh, stuck her do his dogs on him, which was poetic fucking justice. God damn, I hated Ramsey. The long and the short of it is that's who fucking BlackRock is. Whatever, man. It's just like to get this truth, this monumental truth above the noise of insanity and people not listening, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, which was another symbolic reference in the uh, Bernie Madoff story, which was fucking brilliant. The filmmakers were brilliant. But then again, they continued to say that it was the largest Ponzi scheme in history. No, it wasn't. Not remotely. They did point out, and they were very accurate. Uh, you know, I think they said, you know, it's been referenced as a $64 billion fraud, I guess. Really, the real liquid cash was $19 billion, of which this freaking bastard attorney or uh, legal firm who was in on the, uh, on the bankruptcy was able to claw back $14 billion, which is amazing. But a lot of it from the wrong people. But the bottom line is he got $14 billion back uh, that went to a lot of the victims, which is incredible. But meanwhile, so many incredible uh, people, including the poor sons of Bernie Madoff, had to be, you know, just, they were fucking collateral damage. It's just sickening. Absolutely sickening. But what's more sickening, even if that's even a possibility, well, I'll tell you th two things that are, are, are just insanely sickening to me personally, okay? Bernie Madoff, right? A Jew, a guy who should know better with the Holocaust and everything else, ends up fucking doing affinity fraud and basically suckering a whole bunch of Jewish people to steal their fucking savings and uh, in the Ponzi scheme that he ended up blown up. And by the way, the only reason it blew up was the 2008 great financial crisis. And again, to put it into context, $19 uh, billion, which seems like an ungodly amount of money, right, is compared to at least $600 trillion dollars and derivatives trades that were happening in 2006 as a result of the 2008 great financial crisis, of which, in Bernie Madoff's story that, you know, fucking ass, I would like to go off with epitaph after epitaph, but Weasel, uh, uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin says, yeah, look, all of the banks on Wall Street, they're glass buildings. Nobody knows what's going on inside. So they can identify with Bernie Madoff. So he becomes the face of the 2008 great financial crisis. No, Bernie Madoff was not the face of the 2008 financial crisis. He had nothing to do with it. Except that a lot of people had excess capital that they were throwing into his Ponzi scheme as a result of all of the other things that were going on, which were monumentally bigger, and which I have revealed to the world and I've gotten suppressed like a goddamn pillow over my face by fucking BlackRock, who got to be the administrators of the emergency stimulus that came through Maiden fucking Lane so they could buy the world. Who fucking voted for BlackRock to rule the world? And to do a dance with Saudi Arabia that got away with 9-11. So you got 9-11 in, in 2008 and one fell swoop. You know what I'm saying? Do you get it? It's financial fucking terrorism. When are you going to wake the fuck up? I'm furious. I'm absolutely furious. I'm furious about all of it. I've got to rise above the noise, pollution, and confusion to earn your trust. Because I'm not Bernie Madoff. I'm not. You know, I'm going to do this real quick, too. Because the Twitter files, all right? Everybody's up in arms about the Twitter files and everybody, meaning the fucking right, who's getting paid to be able to, with their billionaires and Mercer and all of the other ways that they can fucking game the system based on their incredible talent and resources to get this echo chamber of people furious about the right being, uh, you know, censored. Meanwhile, Trump is up to his eyeballs in this shit and should have been in prison years ago. And it's a failure of the Department of Justice that led to January 6th. Okay. But it was more importantly, the failure of the Department of Justice in 2009, not to rein in the real fucking coup d'etat, which is what I continue to reveal to you, which was fucking Wall Street that got away with the largest criminal conspiracy and cover up in history that buried tens of millions of Americans, starting with Addie Polk, an African-American woman who was innocent, who lived in her house for four decades, who escaped the Jim Crow South through the Great Migration to the Midwest where her husband worked two jobs apiece to earn a fucking livelihood to give her a domicile so she could have dignity in her life only to have these fucking assholes steal it through what's known as straw buying. And then the cops show up to toss her out of her house based on paperwork that was fraudulent. They murdered her. She had to shoot herself in the chest five times to be able to fucking avoid homelessness. Yesterday, a friend of mine in, 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 nor in Northern California sent me a uh, video of him driving around in the Bay Area in San Francisco underneath the bridges in Oakland, and the homelessness is insane. Where I live, I see the homelessness. It's incredible. I feel so terrible for a lot of things that are happening in this country. 
You know, and there's a lot of reasons thing happens for a lot of different reasons. But my God, at the apex of everything is corruption. We have to purge corruption. I am leading the charge to purge corruption. Because in the United States, you're supposed to have laws. You're supposed to have institutions that exist to prevent this from happening. And the best part of the Bernie Madoff story is that they show unequivocally and Kudos to Mark Papopoulos and this guy, Frank Macy, from, um, I think it was Ramparts, this investment operation out of Boston, that basically looked at the Bernie Madoff scheme and go, this guy's full of shit. In the year 2000! And they went to the SEC, and they laid it out in stark detail that said, here's, they did their job for them. And the SEC didn't do fucking jack shit. The SEC covered for Bernie Madoff, and he got thousands and thousands of more victims and billions of more dollars into his fucking bullshit, which was brilliant because, you know, the one, another great thing about this Bernie Madoff, um, uh, you know, documentary is it shows that rich people with all of the resources that they have are just as stupid and vulnerable as anybody else in this society. Especially if you got money managers that are playing with, you know, asymmetric information and they're fucking, you know, yanking fees off the top and they're skimming in both directions, which money managers have been doing for fucking ever, especially in the case you heard like, you know, during this SBF, you know, down, uh, you know, the explosion, implosion, you know, a lot of times they were talking about some of the investors. I think there's over a million investors in SBF and FTX and Alameda and all the, all the rest of it, which is based on bullshit. And anybody could have seen that a mile away. And same with all the other Bitcoin, because it's not fiat currency. Ironically, they fancied themselves fiat currency. That's another story. That's another truth bomb. I've already done it a million times. I'll continue doing it because I'm working on a new project to be able to bring that one to light. But the long and the short of it is that the um, um, you know the victims of this this madness um, are rich. I think that's where I was starting. Those guys were rich. And a lot of the rich people were able to have excess capital and excess money in, you know, post-2008 because of federal, the monetary reserve, the federal reserve policy, monetary policy, quantitative easing, and the fucking, you know, emergency bailout of what took place in 2000, 2009 through Federal Reserve Act 13.3. Hint to my previous point about Roger Cohen and Sullivan and fucking Cromwell. The Twitter files point out that we're manipulated, that the deep state can silence anybody. I've got the fucking stuff that the New York Times buried, the Washington Post buried, Angie Ross Sorkin of the New York Times completely buried. Um, everybody in media, MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, God, Rachel Maddow didn't do this stuff. Tucker Carlson, all the assholes at Fox, CNN, Anderson, Zoolander, Cooper, the entire system whitewashed this. And you, when you watch Bernie Madoff, for example, you know, they show that the SEC, and this is what I was going to try to try to, to close out. The, the um, you know, the, the team of uh, Frank Ma Massey and uh, Mark, 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 I think is how you pronounce his name. Fucking badass. Guy was fantastic. They took this case on a silver platter, on a platinum platter, and they presented it to the SEC, and the SEC didn't do its job. As you see in the con, the SEC didn't do its job monumentally. Same with the fucking FBI. The FBI actually did the job. The, the FBI really did the job in the 2008 great financial crisis, which in 2006, former director of investigations, Chris Swecker, laid out the mortgage fraud scenario for the world to see. And ultimately, uh, the former attorney general from uh, the Bush administration buried it and pivoted resources to porn. Okay. To, you know, I mean, there's so much fucking noise and stupidity and, and, and all sorts of bullshit. And that brings me, you know, to like this, this thing that seems to like the right response to you. They respond to ch ch child trafficking because they want to associate it with Clinton and deep state and blood libel. And it's a game and it's a trick and all of those things. You know, meanwhile, it looks like Clinton was involved with all sorts of shit. Of course, he always is. But I'm talking about Epstein, really. But the point about Epstein is Epstein was doing his banking with two different fucking uh, uh, financial behemoths that are tied to, you know, both the realms of power uh, that took place over the last, I don't know, what, 12 years, right? I mean, obviously, uh, I should say obvious because it just came to light recently, but Chase, Chase was handling, you know, uh, all of the inside stuff for, for, uh, for uh, Epstein. Chase, who's the CEO of Chase? Do you know the answer to that? Who was the CEO of Chase? If you don't, look it up, find it out. Look at all of my stuff and kind of figure that out. Then, um, beyond that, um, also Deutsche Bank. 
Okay, who who is Deutsche Bank to, for example, President fucking former President Trump? I mean, you know, Jesus fucking Christ. These guys are at the intersection of all of it. And so, you know, there should be millions of people, you know, instead of going apeshit on this or that, they should be redirected to actually the guy that I'm just teasing you about, and you can go figure it out for yourself, is who the, the top dog is at Chase, because, okay, he's been involved with all sorts of shit. Uh, particularly the 2008 great financial crisis. In fact, it actually starts with him and his former partner, uh, you know, when they went to city, um, you know, um, God damn it. I can't think of his name. It'll come to me in a second too. Back in the nineties, they were in Baltimore during predatory lending and they got together and they, because of hurricane, uh, Allen down in Texas, they're able to buy, uh, travelers and they mega merged the super bank, Sandy Weil. And then they created Citigroup, which was just an offshoot of what was taking place in the twenties with Sun, sunshine, Charlie Mitchell and, and Citigroup that, you know, fucking, um, the best guy in history, uh, Fran, uh Ferdinand, Pecora uh, nailed for the American people that gave us Glass-Steagall and um, the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is supposed to regulate and police these motherfuckers for sell selling uh, deceptive acts and practices. All right. You can't have markets in capitalism if they don't sell what they're, what they're supposed to be selling. And that, that you investigate that shit. You, if you want freedom and you want capitalism, you've got to have the law to be able to rein in the criminals. And if you don't, you wind up with corruption. And when you have corruption, then you have none of the above. You just have a corporate fascist state undergirded by a criminal syndicate. It's an oligarchy. It's a new aristocracy. You know, it's the type of shit going back to the 1700s that we rebelled against, against King George III and, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, um, um, uh, the, the East India Trading Company and, of course, the Redcoats and the, the Navy and all the rest. I mean, that's, that's how we built our system, and that's what it's all about. It's like extract... You know, you have the military, you have the inside pool, and that's how it works, okay? Look, man, the, the world's never going to be perfect, right? Let's get that out of our minds right now. We're never going to freaking wave a magic wand and suddenly we all get it. But here's a couple of things that you need to, you know, uh, think about, right? Look, we've been polluting ourselves for the last 50 years, right, nonstop. And we have the science up the wazoo about climate change that, you know, is going to choke us out and destroy this world. And we've got heavy duty fucking things that we can fix and we can reboot and we can recalibrate because we've got the technology to reboot our energy paradigm, which would do two things simultaneously if we really play our cards right. One is we've got to purge ourselves from this poison of this corruption, of this inside financial collusion with the fossil fuel state that basically runs everything that also has, you know, its fingers in intelligence, which created the CIA to begin with. It was the oil state with, uh, in, uh, you know, with the intelligence and, of course, Sullivan and Cromwell that created the CIA and then ultimately, um, you know, it, that leads us to 9-11 and Saudi and all this other fucking bullshit that basically creates the trade and the backstop of what the, the U.S. hegemony is based on the U.S. dollar and uh, us being the reserve global currency, that we can continue to do these emergency stimuluses and quantitative easing because the world depends on the dollar, which gives it value, which we get our value because of what happens uh, basically in the oil commodities market. And then ultimately we can do things where all of these guys in the, in the, um, in the financial system can, hey, I mean, can uh, skim. They can skim on one, one, one scam to the next, and that's what they've done. We've had nothing but scams since 2009. Ultimately, there's been zombie companies, right? Companies that don't have a profit, but they can borrow and they can, you know, do stock buybacks and all sorts of other things that basically pop up the balance sheet so that they look like they're real companies, but they're really not. And they're not doing anything in the real economy. So then ultimately we have COVID and that creates all sorts of other stuff. And we have this infrastructure project and everything else. You know, look, you've got to have finance. You've got to have structure. You've got to have the ability to have vision to be able to do things. But you can't get a, um, you can't get a Green New Deal without a clean New Deal, which brings us to corruption. Corruption is the most horrific national security threat that exists now. And it's going to blow up again in our face. And it never ends. And so here I am screaming to the world and very few are listening. Look, it's a moral imperative that we recognize the facts that Wall Street has been operating with financial terrorism for their own gain and everybody else's uh, betrayal. Um, you know, fucking A, really in some ways going back to the 80s. I don't want to say in some ways because it was. They just have more and more control, most, mostly through technology and your ignorance. Too much information, too much disinformation, too many people without knowledge of how things work, too many people that are slick, 
that have big audiences that can tell you what they want to tell you all day, every day, where they cherry pick information and ultimately going to tell you an agenda that they're going to sell you. And that's, you know, maybe that's what media has always been to a degree. But come on, I come from a I come from a place where it's like I believed in Superman. I believed in, you know, uh, the, 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 the sort of satire and the smugness and the, uh, you know, uh, the wise ass of Bugs Bunny, for example. Sorry to take this down a cartoon fucking level, but that's how easy this is. How about Popeye giving a big uppercut to fucking Bluto because Bluto's the bully? You know what I'm saying? It's like the American ideal is not to, A, be controlled by an aristocracy or some sort of, like, you know, convoluted tyranny, right? The American way is liberty. And then we've created this construct through the Constitution, through the Revolution, and then through the Civil War, and then through, you know, our, our battle against fascism, and then ultimately into the Bill of Rights. So we get it right a lot of the time. We've gotten it wrong plenty of times. But this is one of those times where you have to stop listening to everybody who's telling you a lie. The truth has to have value. The truth has to rise above this ocean of madness and distortion and deception because they're playing you. And a lot of you want to be played. A lot of you are working your ass off where you're looking for a quick rich, uh, quick scheme, right? A get rich quick scheme. And it's like, oh, hey, everybody's fucking following the, uh, the crypto thing. Tom Brady and uh, Matt Damon and Larry Sanders, Larry Sanders, Larry David and Shaquille O'Neal are telling me it's safe. So, hey, it's safe. And then you get fucked. Look, it's all a shell game. It's all a shell game. The economy needs to be based on the basics, the fundamentals. It has to be aligned with long-term profit, long-term greedy. You have to have a situation where you have a safety net for those who've fallen through the cracks, but that can rebuild. And then you have to have a new deal situation where you rebuild the entire country to basically uh, uh, you know, uh, create this new USS enterprise of sustainability based on common sense and strength and character, which is what the United States is idealized to be. We've reached it so many times in our existence, okay? That's how I have the opportunity to be the kind of person I am, because I've learned through all of the influences of me and my whole life and heroes and everybody else. And it's like, God damn, do I want communism? Fuck no, I don't want communism. Why? Because I think the best and the brightest should rise to the top and be able to have an opportunity to go as far as the market will take them. But on the converse side, you've got to have really in capitalism the idea that there's risk reward. That there's creative destruction. When shit goes sideways, the bad guys go down. They get arrested or they lose everything and then they go in shame for the rest of their lives and, you know, nobody wants to be that guy. But instead, we've rewarded the criminals over and over and over. The motherfuckers that are behind in those towers uh, that, you know, asshole um, Andrew Ross Sorkin says, well, nobody can identify. I identified them. They're all the CEOs on Wall Street who used what was called control fraud through Gresham's dynamic to basically use perverse incentives to get everybody to lie, steal, and cheat to make up this fictional economy that they all got paid short-term uh, bonuses on and got rich, blowing up the world. And then what happens when it all goes down? Do they go bankrupt? Do they go to prison? Because they didn't. Barack Obama let him off the hook, and then the Federal Reserve gave him tens of trillions of dollars to where we went like this, etched and sketched everything, and then, you know, now we get to see in the Bernie Madoff story all of the victims, and it's horrific, right, of, the, uh, of their particular story. But guess what? There's tens of millions of people out there that got crushed by this system and also the betrayal of our judicial system that allowed documentation fraud in our courts to basically illegal foreclose on millions of Americans. That's the story that I have. And come hell or high water, I'm going to get this truth to the American people and I'm going to uh, you know, launch a, uh, uh, a revolution against these motherfuckers and, and, and motherfuckers. And I'm sorry if I, I feel like I've got a, spe a speech impediment because I'm getting so fired up that I can't see straight. But at the same time, I'm, I've got the answers. Quit being, you know, fools, tools in the fool circus. Quit being pathetic. You know, I, I asked this question and I'm going to finish off with this, you know, for all the ladies out there, right? You know, if I'm Harvey Weinstein and I got something you want because you want to be a Hollywood starlet, does that justify me being a big fat pig that can fucking rape you with impunity and have my whole company in on it and you stay silent? Well, guess what? That's what happened for decades until finally people started to come together and say enough. And they were able to get, 
you know, uh, finally, the, the, the information that existed, you know, with the DAs around the country that ultimately put the goddamn work into, you know, putting an investigation together and getting the facts and then putting Harvey on trial. And now he's in jail for the rest of his life. Okay. There is accountability, but it takes a lot of work, unfortunately. And we don't have enough, you know, I guess resources, or I should say the critical mass and the will to do that, um, to these bastards that are the Harvey Weinsteins of financialism. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do is get you to me too into this situation. And I know there were tens of millions of victims of the housing collapse, but it wasn't just the housing collapse. It was the pensions. It was all of the investments. It was everybody. It was the entire world, quite frankly, that got fucked by this. And the only people that got saved were the banks that did it. Okay. That's not okay. That's not remotely okay. That's not something you turn your eyes to because what I know and what we see is the only guys that are actually willing to fight for it now are the fucking right-wing confederates that are puppeteered by billionaires that are stealing from the system too. They're willing to fight for it. They're always willing to fight for it because they want absolute control. You know, they, th they fancy themselves supremacist. Why? Because you're white? T whatever, man. Some white people are really fantastic and gifted and some are just complete idiots. Same with blacks and same with whites. I mean, you know, whatever. Across the board. That's the thing about America. It all comes in all shapes and sizes and we're never going to be perfect. We're all flawed. But the long and the short of it is there are basics, there are fundamentals. Think of flight, right? An airplane flies. Do you know how an airplane flies? If you don't, fucking learn. It's the basics. You know, I, I'm so sick of stupid, ignorant people that can actually be tools in the full circus. Please, I'm begging you, for those that I'm impacting somehow, Get over the fact if you don't like the, the, the way I look or the way I talk or the way I, um, you know, uh, it, somehow I got to win you over, okay? And I don't know exactly how to do that without doing what it is that I'm doing. These guys who own the system, the financial system, who operate in the shadows, who can get Congress to do exactly what they want and that are above the law need their comeuppance. The only way you do that is with the facts. I've got the facts. And I've got so much more and I've got allies that are going to come, but I need you. I need tens of millions of you. Please follow me. Please share me. Please study me. Understand who Patrick Lovell is. I'm the guy that is Jon Snow again and again and again, ultimately fighting the, the, the army of the dead. I think that the society has become lobotomized zombies that can't think critically and understand what we got to do and where we're going. But I know there's one out of a hundred of you that aren't, and we've got to have that, that sense of like, this is the battle of the, the, the bastards. We've got to emerge to be able to get the truth above this, this, this pollution of noise. And then we ultimately have to have, you know, uh, the same fate, quite frankly, for the CEOs of wall street that met Ramsey. I'm not saying that we're literally going to unleash dogs on camera so that we can tie them up in a chair and have their face uh, clawed off. No, I'm not saying that, even though it's kind of a fun thought, right? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying figuratively. What I'm saying is we need the goddamn law to do what the, the, the fantastic filmmakers in the uh, Bernie Madoff story uh, basically you know, uh, uh, showed us completely. The Securities and Exchange F Commission failed. They need to be on trial. The DOJ was corrupt, and they didn't arrest Trump yet. Okay, now we're in with Merrick Garland. It's a different story than what preceded him with the walrus, you know, uh, uh, under uh, uh, Trump. And then, of course, uh, Eric Holder was the most corrupt of them all, if you ask me, in Covington and Burling, which is the flip side of Solon and Cromwell. I keep thinking that I want to try to, you know, do these truth bombs in like five minutes, right? But then there's so much information. And, I, and what I've given you is just kind of like the surface. Please, God, somehow have this message get through to the fucking millions that need to hear it. Fucking please.